Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Zenitin and welcome to today's video for Legends of Rune Terra. Today, we got some new cards to look at. Still spoiler season, uh, no new champion today, but we basically have this setup for the new champion. Uh, gonna be a shorter video, I believe, because we only have four cards to look at today, but they're all pretty much setting up who I believe is gonna come out tomorrow, and that is Echo. So we got Piltover and Zon cards. And I'll be honest with you, these cards seem like some of the best cards in the set too. So uh, that's great if you're a PNZ fan. So let's go look at them. Why not instead of just rambling here, okay? Okay, welcome to the new cards. So how is this? Uh, These cards are fine. And more than just fine, these cards are good. Some of them I think are really, really good. Some of them I'm unsure of, but all four of these cards are strong-ish. So, let's start with the first one. Let's start with Time Winder. Time Winder is a two-mana fast spell that says to play this card, you gotta discard one card. Okay, pretty easy. Deal one to an enemy or the enemy nexus, then deal one to another. Uh, the wording's a little confusing, but there is another card that's already in the game that has wording sim that's not even similar, but the exact same wording as this, and that is Static Shock. Um, I know a lot of people don't know what Static, or they know what Static Shock does, but they don't actually realize how it's worded because everyone knows what it is, so they don't really read the card. Uh, but Static Shock is pretty much worded the exact same way as this. So this card is Static Shock for two mana, and it doesn't draw a card. And to play it, you have to discard a card. Okay. I like it. Um, really, really mean to aggro players. I, the only deck, in my opinion, that will play this card is Ezreal Draven at the moment. Who knows in the future? Maybe more things will come out. But I feel like if you're playing this card, you really need a lot of cards to discard. Like things like Think Gems... Spinning Axes, um, I can't even remember the name of the card, but, you know, that one mana card that says, like, if you discard it, draw a fleeting card, and if you play it, like, all your fleeting cards are not fleeting anymore or something like that. Um, or just cards in general that like to be discarded, like Flame Chompers or Vision or whatever. Still, though, this card is powerful. If you're able to discard a created card or just a small-ish card that doesn't really matter, like a Gem or a Draven Spinning Axe... This card is nuts. Now, the problem is, Ezreal Draven likes Spinning Axe, or sorry, Spinning Axe, likes Static Shock because it also cycles through their deck. Could Ezreal Dra can Ezreal Draven afford the lack of cycling to get the Static Shock effect for, what, two mana less? Sure, it comes down much faster to help slow down aggro, but... Again, I feel like Static Shock's just better. I don't know. I feel like it might be a meta-dependent thing. Uh, I've seen some people say like, oh, Discard Aggro. Discard Aggro would play this. I don't think Discard Aggro would play this. I don't think this does enough for Discard Aggro. And before you say, but it lets them discard cards. That's, in my opinion, not a problem for Discard Aggro. Discard Aggro has enough ways to discard cards. This card is not an, a great burn spell, like a get excited or something. So I don't really think it discard aggro deck would play this or at least not even three of uh still though i think the card is powerful um and again maybe in the future it'll become more and more powerful as time goes on the next card drop border one mana one three if you see me in a prediction summon me um i like it i like it um so here's the thing about drop border if you're ever forced to play the card and play it as a one mana one three, it kind of sucks. Now, notice it says, if you see me in a prediction. I assume all you have to do is, well, see it in the prediction. You don't have to choose it as your predicted card. So, you know, let's say you predict and you see the three cards and one of them's the drop order. The drop order, I assume, would get summoned and then you would still choose what card would go on top from those two remaining cards. That's how I assume this card would work. Uh, because that's kind of how, like, Kahiri works. The six mana Kahiri. Um, so... 
is how good is this card? Like you can do some cute stuff with like counterfeit copies and shuffle in a bunch of these and then predict and maybe hit like three of these on your predict and summon three of them. That's cute, but I don't know if that's enough. Again, some of these cards might get more powerful if Echo has synergy with them. And most people are guessing a lot of these cards will be somewhat synergistic with Echo because, well, they were shown before Echo came out. But yeah, as for Drop Border, I don't know. I don't know about this card. I think it's a, it's a powerful effect, but I just, I'm not too certain about it. And I guess you can say like, well, if you're against an aggro deck too, you can just play it as a one mana one three because that stat line is very defensive for a one drop. But I'm not sure about this card. I do like it though. It's very cool. I like how, I like the whole like seeing it in a prediction and it summons me. That seems really fun. It's value. Uh, the next card, probably the most powerful card we've seen in the set or at the very least in the last few days, Time Trick. Time Trick is a very simple card. Two mana burst spell, predict, and then draw one card. This card's nuts. Um, there are cards in other games, specifically Magic, that are similar to this. Think like Opt and Anticipate if you're from those card games. Uh, both Opt and Anticipate are solid, playable cards. So I don't think there really needs to be too much argument here about Time Trick being good. I feel like pretty much almost any Piltover and Zon deck will play Time Trick, except for maybe Burn decks that don't want to even spend the two mana to predict and draw because it will slow them down. But even Burn and Aggro decks in general won't be that crazy because they'll be like, oh, I can in the late game, I can Time Trick and look for Decimate or get excited or something. Also, because it's burst speed, you can use it in case you're uh, in a bad situation. You're like, oh no, my opponent, they have like a lot of X ones on the field. Let me try a time trick and find like a withering whale or some static shocks or something, or maybe a box if they were summoned all at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Um, I also think the other kind of deck that wouldn't play this card is a deck that is very tight on cards. Like they don't have a lot of flex spots. Now there are cards or there are decks out there that are decent or even good that play a lot of cards that are just okay. And while the card itself is okay, while some cards are just okay, the deck itself is just good. And they'll definitely play this as a one, two, or even three of. So I like the card. Uh, sure, you have to pay mana for it, but this card's really powerful, giving you selection and filtering. It's really nuts. I don't really think there's too much to talk about with it though, because it's not that complex of a card. Now the next card though, this is a card I have no idea how to evaluate. I think it is strong though. Practical Perfectionist. Three mana four two, play the card. You then predict. Okay, cool. Create three copies of the chosen card in your deck. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Um. Immediately, one of the first things I'm thinking of, there are two things I think of when I look at this card. One, um, there's a great curve, or not great, but like there's a fun curve of like the new feline, the cat, on turn one, turn two, zillion, turn three, practical perfectionist, maybe hit either the hexite crystal or whatever it's called, or a time bomb, and try to do that. That sounds cool. And then maybe you even play some drop borders in the deck too. Maybe Echo will have some good synergy with the Perfectionist. There's also, of course, Elnux. I am definitely going to try like some Ezreal, Sejuani, Elnux deck. Uh, the thing with this, with the Practical Perfectionist, is she does kind of make your uh, early turns awkward for an Elnux deck because you want to play the new three mana Elnux on three to get more Elnux in the deck, but maybe you could play it on four instead and play this on three, play the new Elnux on four, and then play Troop of Elnux on five. Maybe. But I think this is a strong card. It's a very powerful effect. Stat lines, fine. Not amazing, but fine. I kind of wish he had three health and was like a three, three instead of a four, two, but again, it's fine. Dynamistic shots, whatever. Dyna Avalanche is annoying, but it's okay. Anyway, though, all four of these cards, I already, I feel like they all have 
varying degrees of constructed playability, but I do think they all are probably constructed playable. With Time Trick being the most playable, in all honesty. Anyway, though. Uh, but yeah, I like them. I really am looking forward to Echo. Uh, this is going to be, like I said, this is a short-ish video, but we only had four cards to talk about. And in all honesty, some of them kind of just need to, in my opinion, see how good or bad Echo is. But I think some of them could be playable right now in the current meta. If they were in the game now. Uh, anyway, though, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I'm just completely bad and can't uh, can't evaluate cards. Maybe you think uh, Drop Orders is nuts. Maybe you think uh, Time Trick is trash. Maybe you think Time Winder does go in discard aggro. I'd love to hear any kind of opinions you have down below in the comments. Uh, and if you guys just enjoyed the video in general, of course, you could always leave, if you could always leave a like or a comment down below, it always helps me out. And if you want to keep up with the Legends of Runeterra content, you can always go and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch me play some Legends of Runeterra, you can always go and check me out on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash I stream there pretty much every single day. Anyway, though, with that all said and done, thank you all again once more for watching this video. And until I see you guys in the next one. Bye.